Hey everyone, welcome to the CG Artist Academy. Welcome back to the channel. And like you saw in the beginning of this video, we are going to create this abstract spline thing. So <clears throat> it's completely procedural. And uh, recently I saw that video uh, over the internet. People are creating in this this kind of effect in uh, Cinema 4D. So I thought I should create in Houdini. And uh, this is the way I achieved it. So. Bef uh, before starting, I just want to say thanks. Thank you so much for your support and appreciations, uh, which I'm regularly uh, getting. So thank you so much, guys. And keep supporting, keep commenting, and keep liking, liking my video. If you if you guys have any suggestions and all, you can definitely put in put all those in comments. And uh, there are my social handles uh, of Instagram, Behance, and uh, if you want to follow, you can follow. So let's get started. Uh, we are here in Houdini. First of all, we will create a geo node and uh, we'll rename it abstract splines. Just press I or double click to get into the node. Here, we will create a circle and uh, orientation should be ZX. Okay, scale should be 0 0.1. Primitive type to be polygon. Next, we will create a pop network. Connect circle to the first input. Double click, get into that. And delete this node. We don't, don't need that. In the source input. Okay, just go to the source. Select all geometry. So we get, we get this polygon here. Uh, by other things are like fine. Go to the birth. <coughs> we only uh, we will uh, write an expression here, which is a dollar SF simulation frame double equal to one. That's it. Okay. Next, uh, we don't need to change other things. Everything else is fine. And uh, next. We will create a SOP solver. Okay, let's connect it here. And uh, before going inside inside this SOP solver, uh, we need to we need to create a geometry on which uh, these uh, abstract spline will travel. Uh, let's create a grid. And uh, uh, rows and columns should be 50, 50. And uh, let's template this so, so that we can see. And uh, let's create a null here. Rename it to base. Okay, that's it. Let's uh, disable this template option. Get in, inside this pop net. And now this time we will go inside the swap solver. First of all, this node is importing this. Uh, <clears throat> whatever happening in this popnet uh, this top import is uh, importing everything in the scene in this option okay so next we will create a resample okay let's connect it and length to be 0 0.05 okay next we will smooth it out After that, we will create a, a ray node. In here, we will import the grid. Okay, so let's uh, add a node called object merge. And in this object one, import that base it should be this. And select it. Okay. And in here, method should be minimum distance. So here, uh, this part is done. Now go back to your pop net. After this pop solver, we will add a pop interact. That's it. Just connect it. And uh, let's see. And you can see that it's starting creating that art effect which 
we can see over here in the previous video I have shown. Okay. So next, what we need to do is, it's actually uh, changing its shape very fast. So what we can do is, we can add a pop drag. Let's connect that, and a resistant resistance should be ten. Now, if we play, you can see that it's coming the way it should be. Okay. After you are done with this, definitely uh, it's up to you. You guys can definitely improvise and uh, do some R and D on that. What you can do best out out of it. Okay, it's just a simple process. As you know that Houdini is like you can put anything anywhere. It's all about your uh, how you can how you wanna achieve your things. Okay, now what we need is we need we don't need this geometry. We need the curve. Okay, to get that we'll add a Carve node and just enable, just enable that. So we will get this curves. Okay, but uh, these are not smooth. So next, what we need is we need to do the smooth. Let's uh, add the smooth node and uh, strength should be twenty four or maybe whatever the strength value good at uh, your artwork. It's completely up to you. Okay. Okay. After this, we need a. We need to extrude this. Okay. To do the extrusion, what we need is poly extrude. So, let's add that poly extrude, and we try to extrude, but it's not happening the way we want. We need to extrude it in the upwards. Okay. So to do that, we need to add a attribute triangle node. Let's connect between smooth and poly extrude. And here, all we need is float at the rate z scale equals to one. That's it. And why we did that? Because in the poly extrude, we get this local control. So just enable this distance scale. Go back to your this option, extrusion mode. Here, quite normal. And now let's extrude in minus, and you will get this extrusion. Okay, this part is done. Next, we need the thickness. To add that thickness, what we can do is we will again add a poly extrude node. Okay, and uh, let's extrude the distance like 0.01. You can see that it's extruding, but I need the back face also. So to enable that, what we can do is output back, enable this, and you can see that you will get the extrusion. One more thing we need to do is in here, we need the subdivisions. Okay. Because if I go in the wireframe, it's not subdivided. So here in the first poly extrude node, we will add the three, which is enough. I guess if you want more, you can definitely do that. And the second one, we will add the two. Okay. After that, we will need a subdivision mode. That's it. And it's done. So that's how you can achieve this uh, abstract spline in Houdini very easily. I hope this is not too much complicated. Next, what I did is I just add a raw alembic node and export it out. Like you can see in my other tutorials, how we export is very easy. Just select your frame range, select the output path, render take, render it take, it should be main, and just export it out. And after that, I rendered it in, in Blender. Okay, how I did that? It's very simple. Let me show you. So here is my Blender file. It's a very simple scene. These are my abstract lines. I have a plane like this. I have a camera set up and I add this depth of field null uh, to tell camera where to focus and according to that uh, in the camera settings I just uh, added a focus object and use this f-stop to play with the depth of field okay 
this is very simple and it's just like you can see that it's the same thing and I rendered it out in EV okay and uh, with the shading I didn't do much let me show you that so if I select that actually I created the two setups but I used only one it's very basic it's very simple you easily you can do that no everyone can do that it's just a principle shader I use this color ramp hue and saturation and the layer weight so the freshness of the uh, layer I, I added to the factor value and ramp color to the hue color and hue color to the base color okay so let me show you the render so the color of my ramp is can be can be controlled by the hue so if I change that you can see that now it's green and uh, yeah it's just very simple and in the principal shader I just use the metallic one specular should be 0.5 uh, and uh, roughness is 0.2 that's it nothing much I did with that and just I used an SGRI to render it out so the gold kind of look I find better so that's why I rendered it out that way so you can see that here and then just I rendered it out with EV which is very fast and uh, that's how I created this effect so I hope you guys like this tutorial and uh, if you like it then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe don't forget to press that bell icon and uh, hope you guys are doing fine uh, and take care of yourself we will see you next time thank you so much